Hello and welcome. I'm Michelle Fox with IndustryIQ.com. This week we'll be talking with Robert Goschel, who describes some exciting changes at NFK Dental. Christine Nathy discusses a recent federal report about oral health care in this month's column in RDH Magazine. And finally, Devin Howe, who offers his insights about trends with flexible partials. It has been an exciting week for NSK Dental. Kevin Henry, the editor of Proust Magazine, caught up with Robert Goschel, NSK's North American Marketing Manager, to ask him about the big changes for the company that occurred on November 1st. Well, we actually, it is our first day we're established as a, a fully uh, subsidi full subsidiary in North America in the U.S. as N NSK Dental LLC. We are changing the model. We've been operating in the U.S. Um, basically exclusively through uh, Brassler. We are now going to be taking the model to a traditional U.S. distribution model and going through um, U.S.-based distributors uh, and, and full-line full distributors. Gosha believes the changes in philosophy represent the commitment to grow the company's North American market. We haven't seen the growth that we'd really like to get out of this market, and we feel like if we create and establish a stronger presence in the United States, we have a new headquarters that was just opened in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, outside Chicago. Um, the hiring of myself as a marketing manager, a new sales team, a new service department, um, and customer service in Chicago really shows a strong commitment to this market. For more information on the company and its products, check out www.nskamerica.com. The Institute of Medicine recently published a report titled Improving Access to Oral Health Care for Vulnerable and Underserved Populations. Christine Nathy, a University of New Mexico dental hygiene professor and author of the public health column in RDH Magazine, based her 2011 column in the magazine on the Institute of Medicine report. She commented on the report from a dental hygiene perspective, and she does believe that the healthcare advisory agency to the federal government is calling for dental hygiene profession to take a more active role. They do recommend the fact that hygiene is probably going to see some increase in education and some advancements need in education to effectively position dental hygiene in settings other than the private office and to effectively treat all segments of the population. And so I think that's something that I definitely have seen the trend with ADHA uh, talking about how hygiene um, needs to continue for the future and, and advancing the profession, but we also uh, noted that here in the report several times. Christine cites school-based health centers as an example of how dental hygienists are projected to become more involved in healthcare delivery. It's an avenue that um, we're going to see an increase in dental hygienists because it's the perfect place to start treating children who may not regularly see the dental hygienist and it's a great way to continue that on and if we learn about how we change values for oral health I think this is uh, the one of the optimal ways that we have to do it here in the United States is through school-based care. Christine also commented on how telehealth technology will enable dental hygienists to work alongside other health care professionals without being physically present in the dental office. Dental hygienists can practice in remote or rural areas or in a school-based, and if they would like to confer with uh, their general dentist or a dentist uh, that they have a relationship with, they can do that through uh, you know, use of oral videos, oral cameras, and digital radiography. Um, much like we're doing right here, how you, we can see each other even though we don't, you know, live in the same area, and it's a great tool for expanding access to dental hygienists without disrupting the dental team entity so that hygienists can work alongside a um, dentist even though they might not be physically uh, alongside a dentist. So I think that's the uh, beauty of teledentistry. Again, Christine's column, Public Health, appears in the 2011, November 2011 issue of RDH Magazine. Devin Howe is the president of CMP Industries. He recently sat down with Kevin Henry of Dental Economics to discuss trends with flexible partials in dentistry. Hi, Kevin Henry of Dental Economics, here today in our home city of Tulsa. I'm talking to Devin Howe, who's the president of Nobilium. And we're going to talk a little bit today about flexible partials. 
And Devin, tell me a little bit about some of the trends that you're seeing in the industry regarding flexible partials. Well, it's really interesting. Uh, if you look back 10 years ago, the flexible partial business was kind of a niche market. Uh, we're seeing real strong demand um, domestically and worldwide for flexible partials, pretty much because patients realize they're, they're comfortable and they're very aesthetic. Uh, you don't have anterior clasping with, with metal showing. Uh, but there are some clinicians that, that feel they're really not clinically viable, and, and that's probably true in a lot of cases. Uh, but some patients, um, this is something that they want because it's, uh, it's light, it's aesthetic, and it's comfortable. Okay. What are some of the arguments that maybe you hear against flexible partials that maybe you um, can debunk or uh, can maybe uh, talk yeah, about? Yeah, there's, uh, there's a number of issues out there. Um, some of the older materials are, are more hygroscopic, so they absorb moisture bacteria, they tend to stain and, and get odors fairly quickly. Um, there are some newer materials that um, resist uh, moisture absorption and, um, you know, frankly, they're more aesthetic over time. And um, you can get various materials, various uh, elasticities and uh, retention. So um, there's really a lot of options out there for the dentist right now. And what are you seeing in terms of, I know that there's some other color choices out there that maybe dentists aren't sure. aware of. Sure, yeah, there's, there's a lot of different uh, manufacturers of, of materials out there and um, a variety of colors available for a variety of, of patients. Um, definitely uh, a lot of choices out there today. That's good. And last question for you, I know you and I talked before we went on camera about some alloys and things like that that maybe people right, aren't aware right. of. So tell a little bit about that. Sure, um, you know, the, the conventional uh, metal substructure partial is, isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, it's a great treatment option for a lot of patients. Uh, one of the one of the issues, though, patients have uh, you know discomfort with these things, and they come back to the dental office wanting you know free adjustments, and uh, the doctors get pretty worrisome of that. So um, there's some new alloys out there, uh, nitrogen enhanced chrome cobalt alloys that are really nice, uh, adjustable, uh, a little more flexible than some of the rigid alloys, and uh, much more comfortable for the patient. So uh, doctors need to ask their labs about some of these uh, nitrogen enhanced cobalt chrome alloys. Uh, really great, great for partials. Great. All right, Devin. Hey, thanks for your time. Hey. I appreciate it. Thank you. Amazing stuff. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Christine. And thank you, Devin. And as always, thank you, Mark and Kevin. And thank you for joining us on DentistryIQ.com. I'm Michelle Fox saying goodbye until next week. <laughs>